Mm, I don't know. I don't know what shape I want to make that yet. It's Christmas time, right? Let's see if we can do a hat, like a snowman. Can't cut down past where the rings at or it'll come on and off. <laughs> the fun part is trying to explain to people that no, it was on there to start with. I didn't add it later. Those are the kind of friends I have. I don't know about anybody else got friends like that. Those are the ones I have. So, okay, so now let's put some 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 other stuff on it just to make this look good. I said it was going to be a snowman, right? Probably try to make it look like a snowman a little. Remember, there's a 3 8 inch hole drilled in the middle of this. I think big wide beads are harder than anything else to turn. There's always the 80 grit gouge though. That'd be a weird looking snowman if I did that. <laughs> and even in her book, she actually explains that she did some, because she was doing the cutting and actually cut into the hole. But she talked about using some wood putty to, to to um, fill the hole. I believe I edited that out of the book. I don't believe I included that part. But she's a professional turner, world renowned, I'm not. So. And if you're asking what shape this is, I have no idea what this is. It kind of looks like a snowman. We'll call it that. Snowman with a ring around the collar. <laughs> snowman with ring around the collar. I like that. That actually makes a lot of sense. Okay, so we'll do our sanding. That's the fun part, that ring moves all around, you know. I didn't think I was saying it that hard. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing quite much fun as watching somebody sand, is there? Right? I can think paint dry, maybe, I don't know. Grass growing. Grass growing, yeah, that would work too. One of my most favorite moments, I was taking a wood turning class and there was a Mike Mahoney, I don't know if y'all heard of Mike Mahoney. Um, out in Utah, does a lot of wood turning classes, a lot of videos, always a t turner at the AEW. He was, doing a de he was doing a class in Kansas City and I was taking some pictures of him doing his demo with my nice big 35 millimeter camera, right? And I got a picture right as he lo lost control of the sandpaper and it flew out in the air. Cut the sandpaper about right here. I was like, oh, that's so cool. I made a copy of it and mailed it to him. I got a really nice thank you letter back from the man, handwritten letter. I'm like, you could have sent me a pen or a tool or something like that, but you sent me a letter, you know. But we beggars can't be choosers, right? So, well, we can. It doesn't do any good, though. I'll go back and mark my 5 eighths out again. And 
and then go my half inch from there. Hey, that where I made that tool mark is the same place. That's good. So, mark those off here. Well, that's kind of an annoying sound. There we go. All right, so now I got those marked off because that's going to be the point where I'm actually going to start making my holes to actually make my whistle make it sound. Um, but we wouldn't want to make it just look like two pencil marks, would we? <laughs> a little wood burning. Got my wire burner here. Not a party unless something's on fire. So I've heard that before. I don't believe it, but I've heard it before. That's a really big tool market. I gotta get rid of that. See if I can eliminate that the old fashioned way. Hey, it's gone. There we go. Okay. Now, at this point, whatever you have to do to remind yourself, do not turn the lathe back on. Put that in your brain, okay? Because now we're going to mark off and we're actually going to get ready to start making cuts. And where's my saw? I'll, after I make this cut, I'll pass this razor saw around. And you'll see the teeth on that. No, <laughs> that's kind of the idea. That's why it's called a razor saw. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a cut about halfway down through the whistle, um, just a little less than half, then I'm going to angle it back, okay, about halfway to here. So I'm going to split the difference on that. At least I'm pretty sure that's how that looks, yeah? Yeah, it looks about right, yeah. And sad to say, this is kind of a trial and error deal. Your first, your first whistle will not be perfect, no matter how hard you try. Okay, but again, if you don't tell somebody, they won't know. I'll get my mark here about halfway down. Because this should be 5 eighths, and it is. Got to take off the safety glasses that are all scratched and scuffed so I can me mark and measure it here. That looks about right. Now I'm going to do my best to connect those two lines. No guarantee that I'm actually going to get them connected just right. I'm going to do my best. And remember, it's wood turning, right? It's not machinist for those machinist guys. This is not machining. It's wood turning. So, take the vertical cut first. It does have teeth on it, so you can hear it. Or I can hear it. I don't know about everybody else. Keeping it fairly straight. This is also the point where you can destroy the whistle real fast. Wait, cuts pushing away, not like a Japanese pole. Oh no, this is not a Japanese pole saw. Okay. <laughs> that would make sense, wouldn't it? I Small would saw like this, you would think. Your pole instead of pushing it. Uh oh, I just heard a crack. Yeah. We're going to keep working and hope we didn't mess anything up too bad. But I heard the crack again. I well, we'll see what happens. Might be the blade. Yeah. Could very well be. Put some set in the blade. Hmm? Yeah, put some set on it. Ah, no. This is what I heard pop is the chuck, not that. I just heard it come loose. I felt it in my hand. We're going to take a break here for a second, tighten that back up. I don't need anything else to happen here. I know you all want to see a successful whistle made, not just a whistle blow apart. 
even though either one is completely possible. Okay, now saw. How deep are you going? About halfway. I'm pretty close to that. We'll, we'll see where we get. Now this is the fun part. Make sure I got it even on both sides. Yeah, see that's the problem. I don't know where my other cut is at. Make sure I'm in the same spot. Yeah. <laughs> it does cut a lot better this way, doesn't it? That should have gave me the room I need too to make that cut and get. Hey, look at that. I think my crack is right there, but we'll see what happens. That's I think that's close enough. I think that'll work. So, all right, let's pass that around. So you can enjoy the fine teeth on that. Now, this is the part where do not turn your lathe back on. Because you will get yourself in trouble right now. Because if you turn your lathe on right now, the torque will snap that whistle in half. Okay, lesson learned the hard way. I can feel it. All right. Anybody garden or uh, um, accept the fact that they've been told to garden by their spouse? Okay. These are some gloves I found at Lowe's, I think it was, a long time ago. But they're like a neoprene, which means you can get a really good grip on things. Because I want to take that whistle off that with a real tight grip on that end part so it doesn't break. I'll take that off there. Again, there's your other tip for the day so it doesn't break. It also works really good if you got a stuck chuck or something you can't get it loose. That grippy makes that great. Best three dollars I ever spent. Okay, so I got the basic body of the whistle. We're ready to go, okay? So the whistle, that part's done. Now we gotta work on the fipple. That's what that's called. Um, I was told that during a, during a demo when I was doing this and I told the guy, watch your language, this is a family show. So, all right now, I wanna get my sandpaper here. Sand some of this off here. Because now, as I'm doing my test fitting, I want that whistle to go on and off real nice and easy. <laughs> All right. So, how many teeth branch? Somebody measure that and let me know. <laughs> okay. So I got that part done. Okay, so we got that done. That's the part that's going to go in and out of here, right? And then we got to make the whistle part. But we're not, we still got to do another piece here too that's more fun. Look at my time, all I got plenty of time. I said that. I must have tightened that down really tight. There it goes. I put a big crease in it. You know, and every once in a while with this wood turning hobby, you know, you want to have some fun too, right? So before I take this chuck off here, we'll have a little bit of fun. Because you got to do it with a really big skew chisel. I didn't bring my inch and a quarter skew, so I apologize to everybody for that. Skew work, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Sixty. Let me get my head out of the way. My head's not in the way, is it? No. Okay. Like I said, this is a lot more fun. We got an inch and a quarter skew. What's he making? What's he making? Somebody, somebody among you knows. 
<laughs> shavings, yes, he's making shavings, that's right. Like I said, every once in a while you gotta show off, right? Where you at? So, like I said, every once in a while you gotta show off. Oh, you didn't? Yep. It's gone now. It's gone forever now. Like I said, every once in a while you gotta show off. And look, there's enough there. I can make two or three more of those. So. You belong to that wood turning club. I, I, I got friends in Oklahoma that belong to that wood turning club. Top one spin a minute, they're standing there with a mallet ready. If it doesn't go a minute, they smash it. So, okay. Now, okay, where'd I set it? Oh, that's a real one. Now, this is a piece I made. I just mounted a piece of um, pine onto a, um, onto a face plate. And then, oops. That's in case y'all were asleep. I made this so I could have my own sanding disc, my own sanding board. You can sharpen skew chisels against that. It's got this self-adhesive sandpaper on and off. So, pretty nifty little deal there. So, now what we got to do though to make, continue making the whistle, we're going to sand off the um, one edge because you got to have the, what you're working for is you want the airflow to come across here, come off this flat, and hit that um, diagonal. That's what's going to make the whistle sound. Okay. Was that an angle? Nope. I'm not trying to make an angle. I'm trying to make it flat, but I'm not trying to make an angle. But now that I'm trying to get this in here, though, I'm going to take my pencil. I'm going to mark. Make myself a mark here. So I can put it back in the same place each time. All right, that's going to matter. Now, um, I've never made one of these whistles to sell. I just make them and give them away. But I don't want to hand it off to somebody. Well, what germs did he have in his mouth when he blew on that whistle? So I made myself this little tube, and I marked one end so I know which end to blow in, so the other end doesn't have sawdust in my mouth. <laughs> we don't have a whistle yet. <laughs> Anybody done that and tried to clean out a hollow with a straw and end up <gasps> inhaling instead? Yeah. You only do that one time. You only have to do it one time. A hiccup? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, getting a little something there. Still don't have a whistle yet. Close. We're getting close. Still pretty high pitch though. Only a little bit. I'm not taking much all the time. Ooh, that's pretty good. Let's check that again. That's pretty high. Yeah, one more cut. You're right. Scared dogs with that one. <laughs> there you go. Yep, that'll work. So, now they got that pencil mark back there. Just a little teeny tiny drop of CA glue on the back of that to hold it in place. That's another reason you keep those gloves handy so you can take that lid off. <laughs> I didn't use any kind of accelerator or anything because I don't want it to stick tight yet because I want to put it back in there. Make sure I still got a good whistle. So I got a little bit of time before it dries. Yeah, that'll work. 
There we go. Okay. You put the CA on the opposite side from the... On the opposite side from me. Yeah, I don't want it on the bottom. I want it on the bottom. And I want it pretty close to the inside, where the inside's going to be. Because I want to sand this back edge off <coughs> here in just a minute. Okay. So, one more check. We still have a whistle. Okay. So now I'm going to do some fun sanding here. I'm sanding the pencil marks off. So y'all can't see the pencil marks. <laughs> I always wear a dust mask. What did you use for your dowel? Burt. Uh, just, it's just a, whatever the cheapest dowel at Home Depot or Lowe's or whichever store I went to. That's what I'm using the dowel for. I have tried to do it with oak and it's too darn hard to sand down and get to make in and out to make that fipple. So now, this is the hard part to get it to be perpendicular to that other part. I'm sorry? How far do you put the pin into the hook? Oh, it goes all five eighths. It goes all the way up in there. It goes all the way to the inside, yeah. Because that's what a whistle shape should be, right? Knock the edge off. Because again, this is probably going to go next to someone's mouth. So, still works. And now, there is a hole on the top here. I didn't intentionally didn't take that out. In case you want to put an eye screw or screw eye on there, an eye screw to actually put it in there. Then you can hang it on the Christmas tree for somebody. Or make a whistle for someone's neck. However you want to do it, okay? For when you're sick in bed, need somebody to come. And you blow on the whistle and they ignore you. All right? That's what happened in my house. They ignore you. So thank you all very much.